To kick off 2024, I am going to be doing a fairly large book haul. I bought a bunch of books when we went to the city. I don't live in a city, so when we went to the city, I bought a crap ton of books just because I don't really have the opportunity to buy them unless I buy them through Amazon. And then I also have bought some every now and then when I spot one in like a random drugstore. So these are kind of like a culmination of books from the past three months. Keep in mind, one place I went to, I bought a crap ton of books. I bought so many books um, just because I never have the opportunity to really buy books in person at a nice big bookstore that offers a lot of what I want or whatever. So I took the opportunity and I have lots of gift cards. So yes. I don't have these organized by genre. I apologize if that is what you like in a book haul video because then you can just jump to the genre that you like, but I don't have them organized. So I'm just gonna go through them, okay? Alrighty. You can just skip past till you find a book that you think you might be marginally interested in, I guess. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with a book series that I had had my eye on for a little while and I decided to just get them all when I was there because I will not read a book series until I have every single book in my possession so I can just do this. Any gaps in between, I start to forget stuff. So I just bought them all. I bought the oh, Twisted series by Anna Huang. Yeah, here's the Twisted series. This is the first book, Twisted Love, and then book two is Twisted Games, book three is Twisted Hate, then book four is Twisted Lies. Now, Twisted Love is like, as actually just barely 300 pages. It is, you know, decently short, but then as it just goes, the books just get thicker and thicker. So it's definitely a commitment, and I have heard people say that the first book is the worst out of it. Not that it's bad, but it's the worst. Like, the rest are better than the first one. So, at least it's the shortest, and I can just push through it. Maybe I'll like it the most, you know, you never know. But, yes, I did get these. I'm very excited to read these guys. Let me know if you want me to include these in any types of videos. Any of these books, if you want me to include them in like a reading video, please let me know. I probably will end up anyway trying to include each book in some type of video. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever you guys think, please give me suggestions. And I got another series. This series I have had my eye on for a long time as well. And it is a trilogy. It is the Dreamland Billionaire series by Lauren Asher. First is the fine print, then terms and conditions, then the final offer, and I think they're each about a different couple, I think. These are what the spines look like. Next. Now, you guys might think that I made a big mistake getting these books because recently I have seen a lot of bad reviews on these books saying that they're like fan fiction. But I got um, Icebreaker and Wildfire. You know what? I don't care that they're like fan fiction, Wattpad. I don't care because I like that anyways. So there you go. But Icebreaker is a hockey romance. Wildfire is like a camp counselor romance. I love the Wildfire cover because I love these shades of like pink and orange, love it. My whole desk setup is that, like, is are these same shades of pink and orange. My computer is orange. Um, and then, you know, Icebreaker, I thought it'd be cute because it's like hockey related and figure skating related. You know what, I love romance. I love cute romance, guys. Oh, sorry, this is by Hannah Grace. These are by Hannah Grace. I didn't say that, but um, I'll hold the covers up because there you go. There we go. So they're by Hannah Grace, Icebreaker, and Wildfire. I think there's a third one coming out, or it's already out, um, but I'll be picking that one up as well because I can never leave a series unfinished, no matter how much I hate it. I don't have anything on this bottom shelf here. I'm actually gonna put my new books on it. There. Okay. Next is Spinning Silver. I got this one for Christmas. Um, can't quite remember what it's about, but yeah, I think the cover's really cool. And 
Yes. It's by Naomi Novik. Here's the cover if you guys are interested in what it looks like. Next is This Is How You Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone. This one is so short and the writing is like normal sized. I think it's supposed to be, I've read the back multiple times and still it kind of goes in one year and out the other. It sounds like it's gonna be very complicated, but there's some type of like love story tied into it of uh, between like different times in, I don't know. I don't know. But V.E. Schwab said, holy is that good. You guys can read that there. V.E. Schwab said that at the top. So, I trust V.E. Schwab, I guess. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I got this one for Christmas, but I didn't say so. My mom likes birds, so she's like, yeah, I got that one because the birds on the front. I had this on my list. I gave her like a list of books, so I didn't get books that I didn't really want to read. Next is The Do-Over by Lynn Painter. Um, I actually don't have the one book that everybody has of Lynn Painter's. If you have a book of Lynn Painter, which is better than the movies, I don't have that. I don't think I could find it. When I was actually kind of looking for it, I didn't think I could find it. I can't remember. But I did end up buying it. I didn't end up coming home with it, so... Um, I got The Do-Over. Sounds like it's cute. Cute storyline. I'm curious to see what happens. But Lynn Painter is supposed to just be like a good romance kind of, you know, happy. We'll see. Maybe it won't be happy. Maybe it'll be devastating. But the spine here, when I was looking at it in stores, there was two different spines. One without these little um, hearts on the... Sorry, guys. It's focusing on my face. <laughs> Stop looking at me. Okay. One without these like hearts on it and another one with the hearts. And I got the one with the hearts because I thought it kind of added a little bit more to the uh, spine. But let me know like why that is. Because there was literally two different and I tried, I looked all over the books to compare it in any other way and that was the only difference was these hearts were here and on the other book the hearts weren't but like the little uh, like person on the side here was larger. You know? Can you kind of get what I'm talking about? I don't know. But, yes, there's that book. Then I also got Betting on You by Lynn Painter. Um, I can't remember what this one's about, actually. So I think there's a little bit of fake dating in here, as well as kind of like, he, when they first knew each other, he, they didn't get along, and then they start working with each other again later, and they're getting along. Like, he kind of switched up a little bit. So, and then they fake date, I think, to kind of avoid some stuff. I don't really know, but yes. It sounded interesting at the time. It still does, and I'm excited to read it. But yeah, I'm very excited. It's actually quite, it's a decent amount thicker than um, the do-over. So, we'll see. Next, you guys don't understand how excited I am to have these books in my possession. I looked up every single place I could and tried to find and see if they had this book. None of them did. Ever. The only place that had this book was Amazon. So, I had to order them from Amazon and I have wanted these books for probably a solid two years. Um, Radiance by Grace Draven, as well as the second book. Um, Edelon? Edelon, I think. I think there's like a much longer series to go along with these books, but you can just read these two books and you're good to go because it is about the same couple. Um, and then you can stop there. And that's all I want to do. I just want to read about these, this couple and then maybe if I love it enough, like love the world enough, that I'll buy the rest. But this is at, at the moment all that I want to read about, so I got the two books so I can read them. Um, obviously. But it's kind of like... She's like a basic human and he's something else and um, they have like this kind of arranged marriage and to kind of like bind two, two kind of kingdoms or something. Because on the back it says the prince of no value and the noble woman of no importance. A trade and political alliance between the human kingdom of Gar and the Kai kingdom of Bast Haradis? requires that he marry a Gari woman to seal the treaty. Ildiko, niece of the Gari king, 
has always known her only worth to the royal family lay in a strategic marriage. And I guess it's just them like, yeah, it says two people brought together by the trappings of duty and politics will discover they are destined for each other. Even as the powers of a hostile kingdom scheme to tear them apart. Okay, yeah, so it kind of just like arranged marriage between two different kinds of beings, people and humans and another type of people. And yeah, we'll see how this goes. I'm so excited for these guys. I'm so excited. You don't even know. You don't even know. Next is The Voyage of the Frog. Now this is a very tiny, very short book with, you know, normal sized writing, so it'll be a very quick read. And it's basically about a 14 year old boy who sets sail on the frog, which is a sailboat, obviously, as it is on the front. David quickly learns that surviving on the sea is different from anything he knows on land. The waves can be merciless, the storms unpitying, and the creatures that lurk beneath the surface dangerous. With only a small ration of blood... Why do I keep saying blood? I have read the back of this book before and I said blood. Why do I say that? It's food. With only a small ration of food and a deadly calm following the brutal storm, David must find his way back to land, if he can endure the other challenges the water holds. So... It's just this like young teenager on the ocean all by himself on the sailboat. So I think this is actually going to be quite an interesting story. Very quick read. Oh, sorry. Did I say who it was by? It's by Gary Paulson. This is the cover. Next is Touching the Void by Joe Simpson. I'm pretty sure this is a nonfiction. Uh, it might not be. Actually, oh yeah, this is a nonfiction book. Our stopping account of Joe Simpson's terrifying adventure in the Peruvian Andes? And guys, I don't know how to say the word, I'm sorry. He and his climbing partner Simon reached the summit of the remote Ciola Grande in June 1985. A few days later, Simon staggered into base camp, exhausted and frostbitten, with news that Joe was dead. What happened to Joe? and how the pair dealt with the psychological traumas that resulted when Simon was forced into the appalling decision to cut the rope, makes not only an epic of survival, but a compelling testament of friendship. A teacher had told me about this book in high school, and then I saw it on a TikTok about a year ago and reminded me of it, so then I put it on my list, and I got it for Christmas. Next is Archer's Voice. I have been wanting to read this book for years. Literally, I think a solid two years I've been wanting to read this book. Um, it's basically about a girl and a deaf boy. Or a mute boy. Is he deaf or mute? I think he just doesn't talk. Yeah, Archer communicates with no one. She goes to... Like, she moves back to a small town. But then she meets Archer Hale. And he just doesn't speak. He doesn't communicate. So, I think we'll learn more about that. Guys, I'm so excited. I've seen some stuff about this book. Please don't trash this book. If you trash this book, it will make me sad because I'm so excited for it. Maybe I'm getting my hopes up a little bit. But the complaints I've seen about this book kind of are keeping it from getting too high. It's kind of like, like this, you know? It's not up here, but it's not completely trash. It's like here because I'm, I'm hoping it's still going to be as good as I'm hoping it will be, but it might not be, but just don't trash it too much. Please, thanks. <laughs> Let's see. It's by Mia Sheridan. Sorry, I didn't tell you guys that before. Um, here's the cover. Honestly, I think the cover could be prettier, but I like how there's no people on it. There's so many romance covers with people on them nowadays, real and like illustrated, that it's just becoming too much that I actually really like how there's no people. Next is... With Love from Cold World by Alicia Thompson. And she is, she actually wrote Love in the Name of Serial Killers. If you guys know that book, then this is the same author. I picked this book up mainly because I loved the comic book art style of this book. Look at the cover of this. It's so comic book art feeling. I love it so much. And it's even got like that like textured cover. Oh my goodness, I love it. So. They both, um, the main characters, 
um, have to come up with ways to kind of like liven the um, theme park. It's like a winter theme park in Florida, but it does well, but they want more people to come. These two have been assigned the task of coming up with more ways to bring people into the theme park, I'm pretty sure. They kind of make it a bit of a competition, but I, then I think in the end they realize that they should just come up with ideas together and they fall in love. Next, with a cover very similar in the art style, it is Done and Dusted by Lila Lila Sage. Lila or Lila? I think it's maybe Lila. Lila Sage. And this is the cover again, so pretty. And even the back, even the back of the book, it's just gorgeous. I love it, oh my goodness. But it's a cowboy romance. I really don't know anything else more than that. But people think it's a cute little romance. I've heard some people say there's lots of, like there's some, not a lot, but there is some cringy stuff in it. But you know what, I don't care. I've read stuff that's very cringy and I was still, you know, breathing. So I'm very excited to read this. Guys, oh my goodness. <sighs> I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be like a second book coming out in June this year. Um, so I'll probably be putting off this book until I can get the second book. Or at least until I know the series will have a finishing part. I do not want to be reading books if there's still new books coming out. I only want to read them when it's done. That's why I believe more standalone books should exist. Um, like My Roommate is a Vampire and this is the third one seen with the... Um, same type of art style comic book cover. Oh, I love it so much, guys. I saw this book on one TikTok, and I put it on my list immediately. Oh my goodness. So she basically moves into this apartment that she thinks is, like, too good to be true because it's in an expensive area and good neighborhood. Um, but then she finds out, like, her roommate, Frederick, uh, she, he only goes to work at nighttime, and... You know, some of his habits are a little bit funny. And then I think she finds like blood in the fridge. It says on the back she finds bags of blood in the fridge that definitely weren't there earlier. But he leaves her like little little notes around the apartment. Oh my gosh. And he cares about her art and asks about her day um, by Jenna Levine. Oh my goodness. I am so excited to read this book. You guys don't even understand. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Next is The Vanishing Hitchhiker. It says American Urban Legends and Their Meanings by Jan Harold Brunvand. Brunvand? <clears throat> so this is the book and I thought it would just be interesting to read just to kind of like maybe get the backgrounds on urban legends and why they are why they are the way that they are. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was interesting. I got it for like $2 at a Goodwill. So, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I think it'll be interesting. It's kind of pretty much all I know about the book. We'll see how that goes. This might be a good one where I can read like one story at a time before I go to bed or something. It's nothing too long and crazy. It's not a huge long story to commit to. I can just read a little bit every now and then. Next one, I got this one at a Goodwill as well for $2, is Anna and the French Kiss. I would not pick up this book otherwise. If I were to buy it brand new, I would not pick it up. I only got it because it was $2. Anna is happy in Atlanta. She has a loyal best friend and a crush on her co-worker at the movie theater who is starting to return her affection. So she's less than thrilled when her father decides to send her to a boarding school in Paris for her senior year. But despite not speaking a word of French, Anna meets some cool new people, including the handsome Etienne St. Clair, who quickly becomes her best friend. Unfortunately, he's taken, and Anna might be too might be two. Will a year of romantic near misses end with the French kiss she's been waiting for? I don't like the trope where one of them has a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever at the beginning of the book or like in the book. I don't like that trope. So that's already like a little bit like why I wouldn't buy this book brand new, full price. Um, but it was two dollars and you know it might end up being a good read, we'll see. There's more too like on the back of this book is by Stephanie Perkins, sorry, but also this is the cover. And it shows on the back of the book that there are two more books. Yeah, yeah, hopefully they're not too connected. If they're not connected at all, then I don't have to worry about getting them. But if they are connected, then I have to get them. 
because as I told you guys before, I can't leave a series unfinished. Next is The Nest. I got this one from Goodwill as well for $2, and I got it mainly because the cover is so gorgeous. Look at this cover, guys. Um, I think it is so pretty. I think it's about kind of like family drama, that type of thing. But it's, it's a really long written blurb in, in the book, so I don't want to read it right now. But I'm pretty sure it's just about a bunch of family drama. You know, rich people family drama. By... Oh, sorry. Cynthia Dupree Sweeney. So Cynthia Dupree Sweeney wrote this book. Next is Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mirror? 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 Sorry. But yeah, here's the cover. Um, but I, you're basic, like, the girl in the book is basically um, assistant to the villain. She's the villain's assistant. Um, yeah, it's supposed to be a bit of a comedy, a romance too. Apparently it leaves off on a cliffhanger and there's supposed to be another book coming out. I'm hoping it won't be too long of a series, but yeah, I love the cover. I like the purple and um, the sprayed edges. I'm not a big sprayed edges person. Like It's not like I don't like it, but I don't like foam at the mouth over sprayed edges. But it does have sprayed edges and I think that adds nicely to the look of the book. So I'm excited to read this one. Next is Kissing Kosher by Jean Meltzer. Um, basically, she has a bakery, he has a bakery, or at least he works for another bigger bakery or something, and I think he goes to work for her or something along those lines to kind of get her secrets. She's also a photographer, but she struggles with pelvic pain, so she can't really do that job much. So she works at the bakery instead. Yeah, because it says, Ethan isn't there to work, he's undercover at the behest of is that the right way to pronounce that word? Of his iron-fisted grandfather. Mass-produced kosher baked goods, like that's where he's from, like that's the company that his family has. Uh, but they don't have the charm of Avitel's. I think that's how, like, that's her name, but I do not have to pronounce that, sorry. Of her bakery, or her grandfather's world-famous pumpkin-spiced babka recipe. You know, he starts to fall for her, I think, but then obviously, the big drama's gonna happen where she's like, I trusted you, and he's like, it does, it was like that at the beginning, but like, but like, now it's different, it's gonna be like that type of story, but I, yeah, <laughs> we'll see how this one goes. I haven't seen anybody talk about this book, but I saw it in a drugstore, so I picked it up, but I've never seen anybody talk about it, so we'll see um, if it's good or not. Next is The Housemaid. I got this one from Goodwill for $2.00. And I still have to pick up the second one before I can read the first one. And apparently a third one is coming out, so I have to wait even longer. But, um, yeah, so this is by Frida McFadden. It's like a thriller, I'm pretty sure, about a housemaid. Every day I clean the Winchester's beautiful house top to bottom. I pick up their daughter from school, and I cook a delicious meal for the whole family before heading up to eat alone in my tiny room on the top floor. I try to ignore how Nina makes a mess just to watch me clean it up. How she tells strange lies about her own daughter, and how her husband, Andrew, seems more broken every day. But as I look into Andrew's handsome brown eyes so full of pain, it's hard not to imagine what it would be like to live Nina's life. The walk-in closet, the fancy car, the perfect husband. I try on one of Nina's pristine white dresses once, just to see what it's like. But she soon finds out. By the time I realize my attic bedroom only locks from the outside, it's far too late. But I reassure myself. The Winchesters don't know who I really am. They don't know what I'm capable of. Yeah, so I think that was one of the main things that like really drew people into reading this book was the fact that her bedroom door locks from the outside. And so then I think that drew a lot of people in. Obviously, I just said that. That's pretty much all that I've heard from the book. Like I haven't really got a whole lot of spoilers from this book or anything. So I'll read this and see how I like it. I'm also going to buy the other ones, of course. Next is another Goodwill book. It's called Host by Peter James. Um, and it says, Brilliant scientist Joe Messenger will stop at nothing in his quest for immortality. When he meets and falls for Juliet Spring, a gifted young researcher who claims to have stumbled on a way to transfer humans' consciousness into a computer, he believes the final breakthrough is near. Then tragedy strikes and it seems as if the quest is doomed for failure. But as Joe is caught up in a series of bizarre and increasingly sinister accidents, he finds himself facing the terrifying consequences of his own obsessions. 
So I think kind of like the science fiction aspect of this is pretty interesting, like being able to put someone's consciousness into a computer. Robots. I want to see where that goes. Um, and then also a little bit of a maybe love story. It's a pretty thick book. This is a thicky. But we'll see. Next are Christmas books. Now, I bought these for to read for Christmas, but I never read them. Um, but you know what? Not a big deal because I can read Christmas stuff any time of the year. Or I'll just save them for next Christmas. First is All I Want for Christmas. I think I have seen this book printed with like the bigger size, but I got it in the, like, the little size version because that's what I found um, by Maggie Knox. So they're both put on this uh, reality singing show and they're both like, okay, well, we're finally breaking into the music industry, whatever. But then they're paired up for a duet week and they have really great on-stage chemistry. And then people start shipping them, and they make up a fake relationship. Um, and then I think they slowly just start to fall in love. But with their dreams just within reach, they agree to, to the ruse. Will their fake relationship be exposed before they can win? Or will an unexpected trip to Banff sparkle real feelings by the Christmas finale? Next is Wreck the Halls by Tessa Bailey. I've seen this one. In a decent amount of places. Um, is this my first Tessa Bailey book? I think this is my very first Tessa Bailey book. I don't think I've had a Tessa Bailey book before. Um, I don't really know anything about this. Hmm. She restores old books. Then I think he's like a rock star or something like that. So we'll see. And then It Happened One Christmas by Chantel Gruten. Gruten? Gruten? Yes. <laughs> And this is another one that I picked up at like a thrift store, not a thrift store, this is another one that I picked up at a drugstore, I thought it looked cute, go for Christmas, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So Zoe, the main character, loves Christmas, and after years of directing countless holiday movies, she certainly knows her way around a festive tale. So when she finally gets the chance to bring her own script to life, she isn't about to let anything or anyone stand in her way. Not even... Okay, that's a French name, I don't know how to say that. Benoit? Sorry, I don't know how to say his name. With just four days left before Christmas, so I must change Ben's mind. Moonlighting as mayor of Chelsea, the cozy Quebec hamlet at the center of Zoe's screenplay, Ben maddeningly, maddeningly refuses to grant her a film permit in his enchanting town. With just four days left before Christmas, Zoe must change Ben's mind, but not before an unscripted ice storm leaves them stranded in the middle of nowhere well, Ben's chilly resolve shatters Zoe's Christmas movie wish. That's this book too. And that is the last book of the book haul. That was 31 books, I believe. So I'm very excited to get to read those books, but I do have other books, this shelf in particular. I am reading all these books first before I get into any of these. This shelf here that you can see are books that I have parts of that I don't have, that are part of a series that I don't have the rest of. Like, One of Us is Lying is over here. But I want to have One of Us is Next and One of Us is Back first before I read it. That's what this shelf is here. But these ones are books that I need to read before I can read any of my new ones that I bought. But also, um, I kind of like moved into my room a little while ago and I have yet to really organize my bookshelf. So I'm going to organize my bookshelf in a video if that's what you guys want to see. Guys, let me know if you want to see that. Yes, my current read at the moment is an intrigue novel by Patricia Rosemore, Mysterious Stranger. We found this book, or I found this book, in like, when we moved to our new house here a couple years ago. I found this book in a shed out back in the yard, and you know what? I'm reading it, and I'm actually enjoying it, you know? So, I read another novel like this called Tell Me No Lies. It's up at the very top of my bookshelf. I actually loved it, so, yeah. <laughs> so don't hit don't hit on these books too much guys because you might actually like them i like them so yeah okay thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you guys enjoyed it make sure to like this video if you did like it um comment down below what you'd like to see next any book themed video ideas or anything else whatever uh, subscribe for more of my videos and i will see you guys in the next video